Welcome to Failing For You, where I'll fail so you don't have to, or even better yet, so you can too. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Failing For You. It is me, your host, Jordan Yates, and today I'm joined by my friend, Daniel, from Telecontrols. I'm really excited because Daniel is all the way from Austria, moved to the United States, has a cool background in the industrial automation sector, and is working with a cool company, Telecontrols Now, which I've done a little bit of work with, a couple unboxings with, and Daniel and I were supposed to record a couple weeks ago, but it was kind of funny because, well, not funny. It's weird how things seem funny in retrospect, but um, literally like 30 minutes before we were supposed to record, I got laid off. And so I was like, Daniel, can I please reschedule? He was nice enough to say yes. Um, so here we are, Daniel, say hello to everybody. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you, Jordan, for the uh, kind introduction. And yes, absolutely. Uh, last time when we were supposed to record, you know, that was a... A little, uh, you know, kind of punch for you. I'm, I'm sure, you know. So, um, I'm happy that we eventually got together. You know, so good vibes only for, you know, uh, everyone that's, uh, you know, currently experiencing similar things. You know, so that's what we're, we're all about. Yeah, sometimes in my head, I wonder, like, what would have happened if we just got on and recorded? Like, it would have been such a mess. Like, I, I, I wasn't like crying or anything, but I feel like it, it totally could happen. I was so spacey, so I was like. Yeah, Daniel, we're going to have to push that off. So, guys, if you get a quick intro the introduction to Daniel, you could just know he's very nice, very understanding. But today, what we're going to talk about is a couple different things. One is Daniel has a little bit of experience from doing business abroad and working with like the European style companies, as well as, you know, now running a business in the US and having those counterparts. And then the idea of, you know, when you have a really good idea and you're on the same wavelength as somebody, but you're struggling to communicate, kind of what that can look like and learning to get your ideas across and collaborate with your teams. But real quick, before we get started, let's hear a quick message from our sponsors. Hi there, I'm David Turner from Process and Automation Specialists. In our world, process improvement isn't just a phrase, it's the key to unlocking efficiency in your operations. With over 20 years of hands-on experience in the heart of manufacturing plants, I've walked in your shoes, worked alongside teams like yours, and understand the ins and outs of your daily challenges. My journey from the plant floor to leading process solutions means I know exactly what it takes to elevate your operations. Interested in transforming your process efficiency with a partner who's been there? Let's connect on LinkedIn. Don't wait for the future of automation. Let's create it. Process and automation specialists, engineering efficiency together. Go ahead, push our buttons. Actually, you don't have to physically push our buttons at all. Here at Captron, we specialize in innovative capacitive sensor technologies, which means better ergonomics for your workplace. And unlike mechanical buttons that break or malfunction after repeated use, our sensors are rated for 100 million operations. Durability is the name of the game, and we're winning! And you can be too. Visit Captron at Automate 2024 in Chicago, Illinois on May 6th through 9th at Booth 2886 or visit Captron.com. Captron. Install once. Replace never. So, Daniel, what is there like an example of a time that you felt like you had a really good idea, you wanted to share it with either your team at work or in a professional situation, but you struggled to have them see how good it was immediately. Well, that, you know, listen to journey yeah. with, with everyone luckily today. And um, when I got out of tech school, so I'm like a, an engineer by heart, that's my passion, automation, robotics, mechatronics. Um, I was offered a job in uh, the R&D department over at Tele in, in Austria. And I said, I don't feel comfortable sitting in front of a desk, nine to five designing electronic boards, you know? So I was mm -hmm. like, call me if you have a job in sales. So <laughs> what happened then was I got called a few, a few weeks later saying, hey, there is an opening for sales in um, Southern Germany, right? And I want to say that the, the first learning curve that I took, um, and that was almost 10 years ago now, um, was pretty much, you know, presenting a product to a market, to a customer that was um, pretty much fully saturated with all of the competition, being in business for 60 years there. 
I was like young and motivated, you know, and then people tell me, ah, you know, whatever, maybe the price is the one point that's the determining point for this project. And I was like, come on, that can't just be the price, you know, and it went on and on and on. Um, and I told myself, look, this is no fun. You know, you have no winning moments, really. And mm -hmm. if you have a winning moment the next year, the, the competition from Italy, maybe, you know, just uh, takes the business because they're, they're you know, have a, a cheaper um, price, for example. And so to me, that meant personally, dang, the, the share that we get as a business is like becoming smaller and smaller. And I started looking for myself, what could I do that is kind of like a little bit of pioneering work, you know, for myself, yeah. I love having that little motivation to do something that, you know, no one else has done before. And I started looking more and more into the North American market, you know, being a 60-year-old a company, we mainly work with, you know, single distributors throughout the um throughout the world and i mean the the size of the us always fascinated me and i was like hold on there's something we could do about this right so the more time i started like you know uh, working uh with the us market um i came up with this uh idea or like this vision of mine to uh open a, a tele subsidiary in um in the us and luckily you know that um that organizational structure that we have at, at tele allowed me to do that eventually right and uh, to touch base more on that um, perspective, it was kind of like Tele is a self-governing organization, right? So you have an idea, you pitch it to you know the ownership team, to like uh, uh, all the, the the major responsible people, pretty much, and then everyone, the whole company gets to vote: do we want to open a U.S. subsidiary or not, right? Yeah. And um, to me, being uh, 21 years old, I was like, whoa, you know, what did I tackle here? Was that maybe like a little bit too big, you know? Mm -hmm. But I kind of like trust the process and over the years, you know, the colleagues and, and also the, the customers, you know, started to see, hey, you know, they're doing some something that's legit, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But what kind of like um, fascinated me the most really is the, the engineering mindset that you have in Europe versus the, the US, you know. In Europe, it was very like enclosed, you know, don't talk to me. Oh, you have a new idea. It must be bad, you know. It's yeah. like a new product, new technology. I don't believe it can happen, you know. And then you go to the U.S. market and you see out of a sudden kind of like open doors, you know, like people are more curious and mm -hmm. are more like willing to try things out. And I feel like that's what, what I ultimately like about, you know, this industrial um, environment here in the U.S. compared to Europe where there's like uh, five security factors, you know, like uh, dozens of buffers, you know, nothing can happen, you know, and here it's more like, okay, you know, we'll risk it, the biscuit. And um, yeah, that's where, where we are. And uh uh, that to me personally is a lot of uh, motivation, you know, introducing people to something that they haven't seen and, and also kind of, uh, you know, learn from each other. That's the, the biggest, biggest part. Yeah, no, it's definitely like the the classic idea of the American dream and like the free market economy of, you know, like, hey, like we're going to try something new and it's embraced because I think here a big part that I've noticed the longer I've been in the automation industry is there is that like element of people want to buy from people and the more they get to know you and the more humanize your brand is the more they're interested in getting to know what your product is rather than leading with your product you almost lead with like yourself and who you are and then they're like okay i like this guy i'll buy whatever he's selling kind of thing whereas the other way around sometimes it's like the product needs to speak for itself and the price needs to be the best and there's just like so many things that just don't even include like the you part of it. But Are you ready to dive into the exciting world of electronics and circuit design? Then look no further than EIM technology, the one-stop solution for all your electronics ed tech needs. At EIM technology, their mission is to deliver the perfect blend of fundamental knowledge and hands-on experience. Their products are designed to help learners at all levels develop their skills in electronics and hardware, regardless of their motivations. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced enthusiast, their user-friendly products and learning modules are already being adapted into many schools and home workspaces worldwide. Check them out today at shop.eimtechnology.com. Use promo code FFY24 for 15% off your first order. That's a special product code for all the failing for you listeners. But I'm interested when you had this idea, like 
it's a huge idea to think like, hey, I want to expand into the other side of the world, penetrate that market. How did you go about preparing like your pitch to the company? Like, did you make a presentation? Did you just go up there and like, you know, like word vomit? Like, what did that look like with your process? Yeah, I mean, so uh, the and that's a very good question because, you know, um, I pretty much had zero sales skills when I started, you know, for, for telling. I, I had like great mentors, you know, and great you know, peers that I was able to, you know, tag along with and learn from. And uh, when that idea of the U.S. subsidiary first rushed into my head, I was like, okay, we might need a business plan. You know, I came up with a business plan. And we're like this close to executing the idea. And then a new CFO came on board. And I was like, this is a disaster. Oh, no. you know? It's all about numbers now. And, uh, but luckily, actually, shout out to Marcus Ramsauer, you know, our group CFO. He's been of, of great help, you know, and has tons of experience in the, in the, in the financial aspect of, you know, industrial automation companies. And that even gave me an uplift, you know, and, and I feel like at that point of time, you know, it was also, you know, good for uh, the, the tele leadership team in, in general to see, hey, cool, there is, you know, something happening that we haven't seen, you know, let's support it, of course, to a certain point. Um, and then we can always choose that route of, or that point of return, you know, in case it doesn't work out, you mm -hmm. know, which knock on uh, wood, uh, it worked out so far. But um, yeah, I mean the the that's the the only main thing really I, I I can I can share with you about that. It was like a group effort, you know. After all, because a lot of people saw the the vision, they were like, "Hey, I like it," you know. But what about this? You know, there was always yeah. what about you know. If, if you work in Austria and Germany, there's always this what about this. But don't forget, how about this? You yeah. Know? And I was like, we'll figure it out on the, on the go. You know, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, I feel like that that one you know, step that I started wondering very soon when I opened then the U.S. office was, you know, we've, we're 60 years old, you know, we have 100 employees. Why am I that 1% that took that step, you know? Why are mm -hmm. we not doing this in, you know, the African market, which is, you know, up and coming? Why are we not doing this in, in Pakistan, for example? And uh, that's what still lingered around in my head. And ultimately that triggered kind of like my myself to, uh, study the more like the organizational behavior uh, mm -hmm. point of uh, of our you know work environment having that basic toolkit for technical stuff fine but I wanted to kind of get a glimpse on the organizational uh, organizational point and yeah it turns out it's all about purpose yeah. <laughs> and acceptance yeah absolutely and so I guess before we get more into like the how's it going portion I'm curious if you had to give somebody advice that they want to pitch something to their company, they have an idea, but maybe they're a little nervous because they're not used to the situation where it is as collaborative and open to like, just go pitch to like the CEO, CFO, like what would your advice be on like, Hey, you need to have these ducks in a row before you go give this business case. Like, do you have advice for people? Right. Um, that's a good question, actually, and um, that was also part of my studies, in fact, and there was one particular example that stuck to me was like, first thing, what's the worst case that can happen, you know? Oh, someone mm -hmm. getting mad or upset? I mean, if you have your opinion, you have your opinion, you know? You know, screw it. Just put it out there and, and collect and, and be aware and accept other opinions. You know, that's the, the rule number one. And um, if someone says you can't do it, you know, because, you know, and then I always ask, but why has this uh, not been done before? You know, mm -hmm. uh, what are the reasons for that? Did you try it? Yeah. No. Oh, well, then we got to try it together. Right. And so um, one big thing is actually, and that, that stuck to me for the longest time is if you have a new idea, you know, and it could be, imagine you talk to a hundred people on a stage and you want to tell them, Hey, we're now taking ballet classes, you know, mm -hmm. and imagine it's, a bunch of electrical engineers, you know, and we all know what the industry looks like. Yeah. Guess how many are going to say, yes, I'm on board, you know, it's probably <laughs> going to be 10%, right? Um, but on the other hand, 10% are also probably going to say, no, no way, forget it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to do this crap, you know, which is fine. You know, there's a, those are the deniers. On the other hand, you have the, the ones that are, accept things, you know, but what I learned is that the critical mass, the, the, the 80% that remain in the whole process are the people that, are kind of in the middle, neutral. Yeah. And those are the people that, you know, sometimes listen more to the negative aspects of things, but sometimes also listen to the to the brighter side of things. And uh, in the end, that critical mass, if you can convince those 80%, you are a winner. You know, the, the, the naysayers are not going to say anything anymore once you pretty much convince those 80%. And how are you going to do that? It's pretty much 
show purpose and show the reason for doing that. You know, if I tell the 80% of electrical engineers that, hey, uh, it, studies have shown that, for example, if you know how to dance ballet uh, with your customer out in the field, uh, your you increase reliability by 80%, for example, yeah. right? And it's just giving that purpose and like explaining to people really, you know, why we're taking that step and why we, you know, try to make that happen in that sense. And to me, that's the most important thing. Um, you know, telling people why we're doing something, also making sure why uh, we're taking those actions, you know, and, and what the greater goal is, you know, um, and how, you know, that greater goal can be beneficiary for, you know, the individual, but also the organization. Um, and once you show that, um, I think you're, you're um, en route to, to good success. And um, at the same time, uh, also, it's very, very um, energy um, consuming because everyone is different, right? So some people in the marketing world, I mean, you know that, Jordan, some people watch a video, some people want a PDF, some people want a hard copy of a mm -hmm. catalog. So it's choosing that channel um, to, to you know, gain acceptance and, and, and open everyone's world. Yeah, no, I think the way that you kind of described the mental aspect of kind of preparing for rejection when you go up to a board of people and present an idea I love it because I feel like you and I are very similar the way we think about it. Like, okay, what's the worst that they can happen? They'll say no. Okay. And, but what if yeah. they say yes? And it's like, it's, it's very funny because I, I relate so much to the way you think about it, but I know most people don't and they are really afraid to be told no, but I always try to stress, like, just because someone says no, doesn't mean you have to listen, like, I mean, exactly. you know, like come back and say, okay, well actually, but no, I really believe in this. And you made a good point on Hey, like, let me tell you why it's good for you. Let me tell you why it's good for the business. And if you have a well thought out business case and you can stand your ground and you can take the no's, flip them and address their concerns and go back and deepen that conversation, then it's okay to be told no, or maybe not yet. Exactly. Like, don't just give up or don't even like be afraid to start because you're afraid of the rejection. Like rejection's fine. Like it just gets you one step closer to your idea being better. But there's something in the like realm of being an idea person where you have these big ideas and sometimes we want to share them before they're fully developed. And this is when it could go more south, in my opinion. So I have a, a personal issue of, I think of something, I get really excited and I want to tell somebody right away. And I did it with my boyfriend yesterday morning. I had this idea and he's like, just woke up. Like he is like drinking his tea, eating his eggs. And I'm like, babe, let me tell you about this, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, I would have loved to hear about that. Like, many hours later in the day. Like I cannot receive that. And so I get a negative reaction because he's tired and whatever. And it's like, I feel like I say all this to say, when we have a undeveloped idea and we try to get acceptance of it, we are more likely to face rejection because it's not thought out. And so I'm going to ask you, have you ever had the issue or run into the situation where you get these ideas and you just spew and then you realize you don't get anywhere because you haven't put enough thought into it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it's that agility mm -hmm. that, you know, if you're in a smaller scale, uh, allows you to do that. Just try it out. If it doesn't work, people will tell you it's crap. OK, <laughs> but at least we tried it. You know, they have something to talk about, too, you know. Um, of course, we're trying to, you know, be remembered by the, by the positive aspect of things. But um, I see it in, in, in larger organizations where, you know, there is a, a bright idea and it's get dis it gets discussed, discussed, and then it never happens because everyone loses the drive to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so our, our mindset here at Tele is just, just make it happen. You know, if it fails, it fails. It's fine, you know. Um, it's just a matter of when it succeeds, you know, make sure you don't get distracted and sidetracked by 100,000 things, you know, because that's what I catch myself with, you know, yeah. 5,000 nice ideas, you know, but we have to, you know, focus and also show you know, our peers, a, a directions that we're working towards. Um, but yeah, I mean, to touch base on, 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 on your particular case, I have, uh, had ideas that involve Christmas trees or, you know, spoons with holes in them. So yeah. it's easier to get pickles out of the jar and all that kind of stuff. And it's those small things where I'm like, this is cool. We need this. But then, you know, our relatives usually tell us no one needs that, you know, Yeah. but there will be the point, And I'm telling you that there will be the point where someone is, you know, 
in the need of a, a of a spoon with four holes to get their pickles out of the jar, you know. And you'll it's be just there ready. Of the time, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> so. I, I love that. And um, a, a couple weeks ago, Chioma Aso came on and she talked about her book. Uh, shoot, I can't remember what it's called. I have it somewhere in my office. Let me see. Um. Un- unlocking the team puzzle where basically she talks about like the early starters who like have all the big ideas. Then you have your deep divers who kind of figure out how to make it happen. And then the final finishers put it through. I'm curious, since you've come to America and started building your team here, how have you built your team out around like kind of maybe some people that are good at implementing, good at getting things done? Like I know I've worked with uh, Paul and R who he has awesome marketing ideas. He's really great. Like what's, what's that been like building a team around such a innovative idea of coming all the way to America? Right. Um, I mean, that's a good example. You know, a, a Polliner, he's like a super bright mind and he comes from a, a, a financial background, right? So he was working for big, uh, you know, a corporate bank and he was the one that opened in the beginning you know tell bank account actually wow and so eventually we de- yeah eventually we developed it in a way where we're like you know what do you want to come on board and he's like shit that's a lot of risk you know like going for you know a small mini company mm-hmm. from a, a big you know corporate banking um, institution you know but he took the step and to me like that pays the the, the most the uh, um respect to him because i i don't know if i would have done that by myself even like taking that big step you know but um what was awesome it's a lot of you know same thing again trial and error you know we had in mind hey we need help in marketing you know and then it turns out this guy is the 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 greatest mind when it comes to selling you know or like approaching people and like kind of shaping the, the sales process which is it's just so fascinating you know but um not only that, you know, it's also him being super great on the marketing side. So you have to learn as an organization to take those strengths, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and kind of combine it both where, you know, there is this freedom to move within that that scope of work also. Um, and then it's, uh, I always say, you know, make the strength stronger and um, and work on the weaknesses together, you know, and that's kind of the, the guiding principle um, for uh, for us here, you know. I, for example, I, I my enemy is paperwork, you know. Um, yeah. and taxes you know that's oh, something i God, have to learn yeah. in the u.s tax season you know we're right in the middle of it hey but uh you can only challenge it if if you look at it right and and that's what we're we're all about and then it's also important to ask for help you know there's so many different you know um professionals in the market there's so many customers vendors engineers that we work with that it doesn't hurt to just ask hey how do you do it you know can mm-hmm. i learn from you um and then and that's even software jordan from when we used to work together on the on the unpacking videos, you know, software that you use that already kind of shaped how we work, you know? Yeah. So um, that's, that's how it works. And uh, um, I feel like if you look at the needs of a team, um, you shouldn't be, you know, selfish saying, I don't like paperwork, you know, we need an office assistant, you know, I think we should more like listen to what do the customers say, you know, do they want someone that, you know, calls them more frequently? Do they want someone to, I don't know, um, you know, package the the product better so it arrives it arrives nicer in their facility. You know, so I guess ultimately listening to the market is a lot allowing you to shape your team um, as well. That's a a very brave thing to do because I I think I made a joke once on on one of my podcasts of like sometimes I'm a, I'm afraid to ask people what they think because then I'm gonna have to actually implement their feedback. And so like that's that's so smart though. Is like don't just put all these time and resources into fixing things that you think you should fix without kind of any direction why when you can literally just ask the people that are paying you hey like what could we do better to make your experience better like that's a very innovative way to go about like updating processes and like doing things a little bit differently um so something i'm curious about is how how long has it been since you moved to america uh, well, so I've been here pretty much uh, since 2017, 18, you know, that's the thing. I never really moved. I just ended up spending more time here yeah. than in Austria, you know, and I was like thinking afterwards, hey, I didn't even ask my parents what they thought about that, you know. <laughs> Is it normal where you're from to just like move countries so like casually or are you just Not like, at all. okay, okay, because I Not know like. All. Europe's a little different because things are close together, but here that would be a big deal to just move to Austria, like, and start a whole new business, like branch, like that would be pretty intense. Yeah. I mean, for, I always compared, let's say we're here in Northern Virginia, right? If I mm-hmm. was, uh, 
you know, to move to to Maryland, you know, that would be in the U.S. That's like casual, okay, whatever, you know. But uh, back home, you know, in Europe, if you just said, "Hey, um, I'm moving from Austria to Germany," everyone would be like, "Really? What are you going to do there? Are you serious? You know, yeah. that's crazy. How 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 did you think of that?" And even if so, I grew up in Vienna, right, in a um, city with nine million people. And if you would, if you were to move an hour away, it would already be like, whoa. You know? really? So most people spent their whole lives in the same town that they, they grew up in. Whereas here it's like, oh, I'm just going to move to uh, Wisconsin. I'm just going to move to Washington state, you know? Um, and, and, and that kind of like understanding of how big the market is um, and how you're not, you shouldn't be tied to things really, you know, you can mm -hmm. just do whatever you want. You can move wherever you find a nice place you should move to. Um, and that's uh, something that I really like here in the U.S. where if someone, you know, finds a nice employer, you know, they're not, um, you know, shying back of, okay, I'm going to maybe leave my friends behind or maybe there's not as much of that because all the friends are scattered over the U.S. Mm -hmm. anyway, you know. So I, I feel like that's a the big point there. Yeah, there's definitely a culture in the U.S. where, like, I, I know especially people among my age, like mid twenties are like very into like traveling, going abroad and like, oh, we all want to work remote so you could travel a lot. Like one of my friends, she went to Europe for the summer, was in a different country, like every two days. And she was just like globe trotting so casually. But then me, on the other hand, I just get overwhelmed if I have to take like a weekend trip across the state. And I'm just like, I'm not as big on traveling. So to me, it takes like a lot of what's even the word like to be brave to just kind of like move to the other side of the world and do this like here people are like oh my god you're so brave if you even like start a business or do a startup so like kudos to you i feel like people could definitely learn a lot from like your mentality and i don't want to say you're fearless and speak on behalf of you but you definitely aren't like held back as much traditional people would be so do you have any right. secrets or, or tips or you just like have a couple of screws loose to where you just don't register fear the same way like how do you put yourself out there the way you do oh trust me i have a lot of fear you know i <laughs> i i'm a i'm a little scared all the time almost but you know when i came here there i mean it, it sounds you know very um you know accomplishing when when people see like all my friends, they're like, oh, you moved to the U.S. All my colleagues in Austria, they're like, oh, you know, you, you guys are doing so great there in the U.S. Um, but, you know, what people don't see is um, I slept on the freaking ground when I got here. And all I had is a suitcase, you know, because my credit card was declined at, <laughs> at Walmart for my little mattress pad and stuff. Um, so those are the things no one sees. And then you automatically take a step back and, and you ask yourself, what the fuck am I doing here? You know? Yes. And so that 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 is like... You know, and it makes you sad, it makes you happy, it makes you so emotional because there is times you miss family, there is times you miss coworkers, there is times that make you, you know, ask yourself, why did I even take this step, you know? Um, is it just because I'm trying to earn someone, uh, you know, money or is it because there's a, a greater purpose to things, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, trust me, there's a lot of uh, uh, moments still where I'm like, what the heck, you know? What, what yeah. just happened? Why am I doing this, you know? With... But on a daily basis, really, and it's I, f I believe it's healthy um, to to have those moments because you start you know seeing things from different perspectives, and then that makes you appreciate things more as well. Yeah, no, I I'm glad that you added this last bit in because I think up until this point, people probably just thought like this man is fearless. He's just like like I can't relate because like he's just out here doing everything. So I'm glad you you brought it back down and you're like, no, like this stuff can be scary for me too. So like people can be like, okay, if he did it, I can do it kind of thing. That's why I like to remind people. Um, but I guess we're, we're getting close to the end. It's been great getting to know you as Daniel, but you might as well, since you know, you got your tele background. Can you give us the quick elevator pitch of what tele controls is just because why not shamelessly plug your company? Cause I think a lot of people in this industry listen. So what's, what's the elevator pitch of what tele controls does? Well, I mean, that's a, a pretty short one. We do a manufacture, you know, monitoring relays, phase loss monitors, power um, uh, monitors. But, uh, you know, th my favorite line is we manufacture good timers um, for good times, you know. So we're trying to, you know, make the industrial work uh, environment and the industrial industry a little bit more hip um, without forgetting about all the um, all the generations that we currently work with, you know, from um super bright young engineers that just graduated to people with uh, so much experience in the market. So uh, we're trying to add that humane touch to 
a fun industry. Yeah, no, you guys do such a good job. I'm obsessed with the marketing. Like, I love all the the stickers you have. You're like, I think that the new sheriff in town one. I think you guys made a post recently with the yeah. uh, with it the ecap, and it just cracks me exactly. up every time. And like that sticks out on my timeline. And I just think it is marketing genius. I love it. So, guys, if you're not following Tally Controls or Daniel, like follow them on LinkedIn reach out to them if you have any like you know questions related to what they do or if you want to chat with daniel more i'll put his linkedin in the description below but daniel that is all the time we have for today um i guess is there any last pieces of advice you want to leave everybody with yeah one last uh not advice but an offering you know if you feel down or if you feel not motivated on your day-to-day I feel like, you know, Jordan and I are always happy to, you know, uh, be there and, and chat and hopefully give you a few uplifting words so that you can kick butt again. So that's all I can say. Yes, guys, <laughs> we're kicking butt today. So, Daniel, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, as always, I'm your host, Jordan Yates. In the meantime, I'll be failing for you. See you next time.